And just, just while Edith's coming to podium, just again, thanks, Jerry, and particularly a good insight again into why people may use drugs or why people do use drugs. Uh, concerning information aligned with uh, Amory's presentation around the age of forced use uh, and also the changing nature of drug use. And then finally, the hub and smoke model. Uh, looking forward into the future. So thanks for sharing that with us, Jerry. Much appreciated. So I'm going to go across to Dr. Ida Delargi now. Ida Delargi is the Director of Addiction uh, Management Services in the Irish College of General Practitioners uh, and is going to share some insights with us also. Um, a lot of uh, general practitioners are the, the first point of call or first point of entry for identifying people with needs and uh, services of related to drugs, so I think it's going to be an insightful. Thanks. Ida. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Paul. And uh, again, thank you for the invitation to speak to you today. I'm delighted to get the opportunity to um, maybe uh, share my experience of dealing with uh, drug misusers, substance misusers over many years, and maybe to broaden out the discussion as well uh, in terms of you know, looking at it through the eyes of a GP. What type of problems are the GPs likely to see and how we could enhance what GPs might uh, be able to offer. Um, my first slide is uh, just to kind of familiarise yourself with what experience do I have in uh, treating substance misuse. Now, I didn't put that slide up to puff myself up or anything like that. I just simply want to say that I am a clinician. I'm not a researcher. I'm a cl clinician. Every day I see patients uh, who have substance misuse uh, issues. And so often it's my patients who inform me uh, what's happening on the street. Sometimes we're ahead of the research on that, uh, you know, and we know exactly what's happening on the, you know, on the street and the shared uh, experiences that my patients would have. So I think that's an important aspect. Um, I got into managing substance misusers um, a long time ago, as you can see. Uh, I did my GP training in Ireland, then worked in the U in, uh, near Leeds, and then ended up in Glasgow as a GP. And it was there that I was, you know, got involved in treating uh, substance misusers. And I liked it and I enjoyed it. And um, then when I came back to Ireland, a, a couple of opportunities came my way. So I support GPs nationally with complex problems in my HSE um, coordinator role. I've been responsible for training GPs and you know, trying to you know, disseminate uh, information and knowledge about how to manage drug misusers better. Um, we uh, we uh, embedded the training into GP training and also with experienced practitioners, but there's a lot more work we could do on that, and it's a, a, you know, a never-ending never challenge to try and get more uh, doctors on board. I was involved uh, way back in the, um, one of the people involved anyway, in setting up the OST services, as they're called now, that's the methadone treatment service and the suboxone service, so I have a lot of experience in that. Uh, department. But then finally, my most recent project is medical director of the Practitioner Health Programme. And this is a programme that supports doctors, dentists and pharmacists who may have mental health and or addiction issues. So I suppose it looks at it, I'm looking at this problem from a range of different, different angles. What do I know about addiction? Um, what I want to just focus on is that to, you know, emphasize that all psychoactive uh, substances, both legal and illegal, have the potential to be abused and to ruin people's lives. They can ruin the individual health of, an, of a person. It's an absolute tragedy often for families and particularly for children. I know that's been, uh, been mentioned earlier today. Careers are on the line and, you know, it, you can look at any career or any job can be on the line um, because of substance misuse and, of course, the health burden as well, to look at it from that perspective. And th that's what GPs would see, you know, the hospital admissions, the admissions to psychiatric services um, and the time taken up by GPs dealing with the consequences of substance misuse. I want to also emphasize that it's not just confined to deprived areas. This now is a pan-societal um, problem. 
Uh, you'll be aware of that. You know, we see drug misuse in all sectors of society. I suppose in deprived areas, they um, have less access to resources and are probably disproportionately affected, but nobody escapes. No, no particular grouping in societies uh, escapes. GPs are often the first uh, line uh, in trying to manage patients with problems. So the mammies and daddies of Ireland coming in with their uh, young person who's in difficulty and in trouble, and they're often the first ones who will hear how it has affected that individual. And I would also say that like right through the age groups, uh, and I'll just uh, zone in on that in, in a few moments' time. I think one of the other issues is that, you know, there's an increasing normalisation of drug use, particularly in the younger population, and that has been touched on uh, as well, you know, where, um, you know, cannabis use, cocaine use is just commonplace now. You hear it from students from all uh, sectors of society, and it's kind of normalised and flagged as being somewhat harmless, and I think that's uh, a dangerous message to, to give. So what type of substance misuse do GPs say? Well, if we have a look at the legal substances first, and um, these are all kind of, um, well, alcohol, obviously you're all familiar with that. Then benzodiazepines, which are used regularly by GPs um, for a variety of different reasons, but that's the Valium, the Xanax, the sleeping tablet, and they can, of course, people who get dependent on those. And we're not talking about, again, the deprived populations in this. We're talking about all of us, all of our families. Anybody can become dependent on them. The health harms then, you know, the increase in, uh, increase in falls, um, the driving offences, the admissions to hospital as a consequence. And then where do you go with that problem if somebody does want to maybe come off their benzos or reduce their dose. How do we support GPs in doing that? Pregabalin, Lyrica, um, was marketed to us GPs as being uh, a solution to people who needed uh, tranquilizers or um, you know, anti-anxiety medication. We now know how problematic that is, and that comes up on the HRB statistics quite a bit. The codeine, the over-the-counter, the salpidines, the Nurofen Plus, seeing a big increase in people presenting with problems. So that's a, these are all legal um, medications and uh, substances that we have available right now. The opioid painkiller crisis, you all know about, well, most of you will know about that, uh, what happened in the States. And again, these were marketed as not harmful, great painkillers and no need to worry. And a lot of um, prescribing, uh, you know, commenced with those drugs legitimately for pain and for managing the patient, but we know where that led to. And now we know in the States that people who run out of those opioid pain medication will end up going to the street and using heroin. So we don't want that to happen here. We're not at that stage with opioid uh, analgesics in this country, but, you know, let's not go there. The illicit substances have been mentioned by the HRB and by others this morning in terms of what we're seeing with the rise in cocaine use, cannabis use, and I think really the big issue is the polysubstance use. It's the mixture of those range of substances with alcohol being one of the, the key components of why people uh, may die, uh, and we need to be very aware of, we, we as the prescribers need to be aware of how our medication can mix with the illicit substances and the, uh, end up uh, in polysubstance scenario from some of our patients. So um, what I'm saying here is we know that substance misuse is, can cause great misery. Um, and what I'd be saying is, let's not sleepwalk into another crisis. And can we learn from the experiences that we've had to date? Um, I've been around long enough to have, you know, know about the, the nicotine problem and how that was sold to us originally, and now we know the problems that exist. Barbiturates were a problem. Valium was the solution. 
Benzo's lyric was the solution, and on and on it goes. Gambling was made more, you know, deregulated. Now we know the numbers have gone up on that. So, you know, I think what we need to be aware of is there will always be vulnerable people who are victims uh, of both substance misuse and addiction, and we need to be, uh, you know, mindful of that. I suppose I would be saying, like, beware when big business is involved and big pharma is involved, giving us messages about um, how useful their particular product or, uh, you know, they're selling us something, I suppose, basically. Just one minute, Edith. If you okay, can. Oh, right. Less. Prevention oh, is better than cure, I think, is always the message <laughs> that we say. And so, essentially, what I would say is, uh, education and early intervention is key. We can't get away from that. We need to really drum that home. Uh, and they are the children that we're looking after, uh, the support work. Anybody who works in the children's court will just give you hair-raising stories, or Tusla, et cetera. We, we know about that. Um, trying to remove this stigma associated with addiction and encourage both GPs to get involved, and we need more of that. Um, but not have it, you know, I think the mental health messaging that has gone on over the last number of years with personalities and celebrities getting involved has helped to destigmatize the fact that, um, you know, people can have mental health problems. And we need to do the same around substance use, be it alcohol or other substance. So remove the stigma. Um, more training, more resources, because we need the support services big time. And um, there, it's the biopsychosocial model that uh, Sean has mentioned to you earlier. It's, it's, um, that's the name of the game, and we need all the supports to uh, wrap around that. So finally, getting a balance is difficult. I think there are no quick fixes. It's a complex problem. Um, I really don't think, personally, I don't feel that legalizing drugs is one of the solutions that we, you know, will help. I won't be convinced yet anyway, based on the current evidence that legalizing drugs will help. Um, and so that's, that would be my final message, I suppose, today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eva. Thank you, Ida, and very clear messages, particularly as a frontline practitioner, uh, as you described it well yourself, and uh, also interested in the comments that you made just around the um, not sleepwalking into another issue again uh, and being cautious of who some of the stakeholders or communicators might be around this whole issue. So I think your points are well made and well landed, uh, Ida, so thanks for that.